Every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Woo! To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power. Come on. Come on, you declare it. There is power. There is power, there is power in the name, in the name of Jesus. We know where it is to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Come on, say to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army right There's an army rising up. <laughs> There's an army rising up. Yeah. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain. Welcome on my guest, John Ramirez. John Ramirez, how are you doing tonight? It's, it's, come on, devil, stay right where you at because we're coming for you tonight come on. in the name of Jesus. Come on, I am so excited. <laughs> I know everyone's been asking, you know, I, I, I told you previously that I always do these polls asking who do they want on the podcast. And I've had you requested for the last few months. And I told the Lord, okay, Lord, whenever it's your timing, I know you're going to connect us. I know you're going to set it up. And so I believe this is all God's timing. Um, Right now is the time for this. God is doing something. I know there's many of you that are hungry. I have asked him tonight to share his testimony. I told him, look, don't, don't be worried about time. Don't feel, you know, I can't say this because of this. I told him, just be real, be raw. We want to hear about it. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2.11, so that Satan will not outsmart us, we need to be familiar with his evil schemes, okay? And this is why Paul said to put on the armor of God so that we could withstand the strategies. The enemy has plans. He has strategies. The devil's not part-time. The devil's not lukewarm. The devil's not complacent. The devil's not hot halfway. And one of the problems, guys, is that the world has a stronger conviction than the church. The world has more passion, more commitment than the church. The demonic realm is not playing Sunday morning, hour-long pacifier Christianity. The devil is serious about stealing, killing, and destroying. And so, John Ramirez, I want to say I've watched your videos. I've sent your videos to many pastors. I appreciate you. I'm excited to be connected. And I just want to give you the platform to share your testimony. Um, tell us about how it was in witchcraft, what you did, and whatever else you want to share, man, you could just go for it. 
Hey, Amen. Thank you so much, Father. We just want to open up in prayer. Yes. And uh, just anoint this place. The place is already anointed, but we're going, we're going to believe mm. God right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We just stand at all who you are, Father God. You sit on the circle of the earth. Father, we give you the airways right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we tell the devil today, we are the church that we we fear it not. We move not. We, not unsh- we are unshakable, unmovable, undestructible. Father, we come today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We sit in the place of authority on the third hand. Heaven was sitting with Jesus Christ and the highs of the highs of the heaven. I mean, every devil, every witch, every warlock, every sucer, every root worker is under our feet. Every witchcraft, every demonic ground in the spirit is on our feet. Every satanic altar tonight is on our feet. If there's devils watching right now, if there's witches watching right now, warlock, stay right where you are because I'm coming for Come you on. in the name of Jesus. Two things is going to happen. Either you run to the altar tonight or you run back to your car, you run back to your house, or you run back into the closet. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we put the blood of Jesus upon the airway, upon this amazing opportunity, Lord, to glorify the name, the name that is above every name, the name that even devils tremble, demons tremble, the devil tremble, the world tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, none of that, none of that stuff, but Jesus Christ, the one that even in his gravesite, they say he's not here. Come home. Everybody else is here. So we stand at all who you are, my God. We tell you, Lord, anoint us. And we put a hedge of protection around us and every person that's listening in Jesus name. Amen. Man, so good. Amen. Amen. My brother, you know, I just, I just want to share, you know, I, one thing before I, I get into my testimony, I, I want to let people know that, uh, my, 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 my life is so different than any other believer, not better. We were talking about that earlier today. My life is not better than any other believer. I, I, I still pinch myself and I, you know, I'm just dumbfounded. I, I, sometimes my life feels so surreal. Because I, I can't believe God can save someone like me. I mean, I, I, I was like, you know, I deserve hell. I deserve eternal death. I deserve, I mean, boxes in hell for my lifestyle of who I was for 25 years. Not 25 days or, or 25 weeks. 25 years of satanic devil worshiping to the highest level of the satanic round. I was, I was a general in the kingdom of darkness. There was no Christian, believe it or not, that was able to stand by the power of darkness that I had in me. Not because their God was an all powerful, because their God was all powerful, but the vessel was weak. The vessel was weak. The vessel was fragmented. The vessel uh, uh, was leaking. And the vessel didn't have no arsenals to fight back with. That's what happened today that the church don't have arsenals to wow. fight back with. The church doesn't know how to put the devil in his place. The church don't know how to set the captives free. The church doesn't, doesn't know how to teach spiritual warfare. I mean, who did more spiritual warfare than Jesus Christ himself when he walked the earth? Wow. You know, Jesus cast out the devil, healed the sick. And uh, Jesus to confront every demonic devil. You can even imagine in, in on, on his ministry. So how is it that the church today, we're not confronting the devil head on. We wow. talk about the devil on Sunday. We talk about the devil on Come Sunday, on. but we don't confront the devil. We don't confront the devil because you know what? Either you don't confront the devil because you don't know what you don't know spiritual warfare or you don't confront the devil because you're in bed with the devil. And you can't cast out a devil that you're sleeping with. Wow. If you're sleeping with a devil, you can't cast him out because you're going to need him the next week. <sighs> Amen. You know, we, we, you know, so so we we need we we you know what, what hurts me the most before I get into my testimony because my testimony is going to be real real tonight. I'm going to share some things Come that I'm going to share. Come but on. but the, 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 the thing to, the thing is that Christians are sitting, good Christian, awesome brothers and sisters sitting in the church, fragmented, hurt, pain, mentally destroyed in their mind. Because you know one thing about the devil, one thing about witchcraft. If you can't beat the devil here, you can't beat him in the battlefield. Wow. If you can't beat him here, you can't beat him in the battle. A lot of Christians go to the battlefield to fight, but they're defeated here. Wow. You see? So if the devil has space, if the devil is renting profit, real estate in your mind, if he has strongholds in your mind, he has pattern cycles of repeat of, of things that you still captivated, captured by in, in your mind. So you capture in your mind. So you can't go into the battlefield and fight the good fight because you're already defeated here. So, so, so a lot of times Christians go into Christians go into the battlefield unequipped, wow. unequipped, no armor, no armor, no, the, and the armor is really that, that Holy, put on the Holy Spirit, put on the Holy Spirit. So, so, so here is, is, is where the enemy lives here. And that's why the Bible says, you know, do you have the mind of Christ? So, mm. so I, I, I want to set up a platform to, to let the people know that, that I, it was so easy for me to destroy Christians. Wow. It was so easy for me to captivate Christians' mind, thought, will, and emotions in the spiritual realm because I knew how to step into the spiritual realm, change the channel in your mind, come back to the spiritual realm, 
and then and then change the, your mind, will, emotions. Go back in and change it. And then all I made you, you was a spiritual corpse. Oh. You was a spiritual corpse after I was done because I knew I understand words got power. See, in the wow. demonic realm, words got power. The Bible says that life and death lays in your tongue. Proverbs eighteen twenty one. And I know that, that you know, we know that in the spirit realm. We know that we know that in the demonic. We know in the demonic, the words got power. Matter of fact, if you can in the demonic, if we have money for witchcraft, like uh, uh, animal blood. Black roosters, candles, uh, coffin boxes, because, you know, we need coffin boxes to put people in, to put them. In. See, I can take it. I was able to take a coffin box and put your personality in with wow. your name in there, your character in there and watch it for 21 days. Put black candles around 21 days and then speak into your life, whether it's cancer, speak death into suicide, wow. oppression, depression. And I was able to transfer that into the, to the natural man of who you were. If I had a picture, if I had clothing, I was able to capture that into in, in, into. Or if I if I wanted to make you uh, homosexual, I know how to release a homosexual spirit on wow. you. I know how, see it's a homosexual. Right? You're not born with that. That's a spirit. So I know how to release that. I know how to release perversion spirits on people. I know how to release uh, 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 you know in, in the marriages. I know how to release discord in the marriages, division in the marriage, divorce, hus spirit husband, spirit wives. I, I would release those a spirit of lust in, in the marriage. I could destroy the marriages. I gave I gave people miscarriages. I, I destroyed the baby in the womb because I knew that the baby was the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the wow. womb. So I would do witchcraft so the baby can die in the womb. So 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 I came from a place of, and, and I want to just going to the testimony even 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 to the even to the point that the number 21 in the kingdom of darkness means python in the kingdom of darkness mm. timbala timbala is an african deity named african deity timbala that's the same serpent that showed up in the garden of eden that i had a contract with so i out of the 25 years as a devil worshiper i was possessed by that spirit and that's in, in what happened when you get possessed by that spirit you fall on the ground and you swerve like a snake. Wow. But I see and you swerve like a snake because it's a contract that you have with that demon. Same thing that, that they, that's the same demon that tricked Adam and Eve. That's the same, the devil. So I, I for 25 years, I got possessed by the devil and fell on the ground and swerved in my apartment. My aunt and my aunt and my my aunt and my uh, cousin, they came to my apartment. I don't know how they opened my door. Because they came because they had to they had to know how to take that spirit from you, from your body after it was done. Mm. So 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 my 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 connection with the dark side was operating, leaving my body and operating from the second and first heaven and in the and in, in, in the spirit in the territory spirits on the ground and familiar spirits, you know. So my my situation started all because of the age of seven years old. Mm. Seven years old, I was playing at a broken lot. See, I wasn't recruited by witches. People, see, there's people that do witchcraft. There's people, you got satanic people out there that they they did join into the satanic occult because someone knew someone and that person recruited that person. And that person say, you know, oh, someone got tarot card readings and they say, hey, come on in. We do tarot card reading. And that's how they joined the occult. Wow. I didn't join the occult that way. My occult, uh, my first initiation to the occult was a, a necklace that fell from the second heaven. Which wow. is the seven powers of darkness. It's called a sete potencia. The sete potencia is a necklace that felt the seven powers of the second heaven, which is which is, which all seven principalities. The necklace fell from the ground, hit my feet at the age of seven. Wow. I picked it up, I put it in my pocket, and I and I heard my mom's voice saying to me, John, come home. And it was my mom's voice with the demon. Wow. Because they wanted me to run home because they didn't want someone to take the I, I was hanging out with this bully. In the neighborhood, I used to hang out with him a lot, and he, 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 I didn't want him to take the necklace from me. And when I got home, I put the necklace. At the age of eight years old, I was heading to the witch house with my aunt, with my mom, and that's why I got my first car reading. Because the witch, actually, when I walked in, the witch knew that, that, that somehow I was connected at the age of seven with the satanic Ooh. world of the dark side. So they had to, they, what they did was they told my mom that I was going to lose my eyesight. And if I didn't do a ceremony, uh, dress in white for seven days and then wear the five colors of Santeria, which is Chango, Yemaya, Ochun, Owatala, and Oya, which is the mother of the cemetery. Yemaya is the mother of the ocean, which is a marine wow. spirit, one of the most powerful marine spirits of the ocean. Ochun is the, is, the, is, the, is the demonic demon that is played in the movie The Little Mermaid. Mm. In The Little Mermaid, which is a marine spirit. 
Hi. Activate. It's like it's actually when you see Starbucks and you see that you see the symbol of Starbucks, yeah. you see the symbol of Starbucks. That demon. That's Jemaya or local. Jemaya or local. Starbucks has a contract with that demonic spirit. Ooh, that's why they're so. Chills. That's why they're so. <laughs> that's why they're so successful. Starbucks is so successful because they, their logo is on every Starbucks. That's a marine spirit. It's wow. called Jemaya local, and Jemaya local is a spirit that shares the ocean with Jemaya. And it's all African deity from the from the tribe of Yoruba tribe in the 15th century. So I'm I go back Unreal. from that. I go back from that lineage all the way to Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico to the United States. And then when I make all my contracts, I'm I'm connected with Haiti, Cuba. Cuba is the motherland of witchcraft. Cuba, Haiti, Miami is the motherland of witchcraft because you have all the Cuban people there that do they believe in Santeria and Peritimo. They, wow. they the only the only place that they legalize they legalize by the court system to kill animals, as we know. Because see, witchcraft need the blood of animals wow. to survive. They need without the blood of animals, they don't have no power. So they need the blood of animals to survive and continue the occult practices to the blood of animals. And sometimes when they do when they do human sacrifices, it's not for the power. It's because they wanted to they want to slap God in the face and say, look, we can take a life too. Wow. So it's not the same because you see. In the satanic world, from the age of eight, when I got in, when I got in, when I got my first car reading, and then that, that week later, they did the first ceremony for me. I lost my whole childhood. Wow. And it all started because my father was a warlock. My grand, my, I got an aunt right now. She's a witch. She doesn't like me saying that, but get over it. <laughs> I, call you for what, I call you for who you are, right? If you're a doctor, I call you a doctor. If you're a lawyer, I call you a lawyer. But if you're a witch, you're a witch. Mm. So her situation, she revenged her death, her father's death. That's right. Li li listen to me, my brother. This is what I told Christians tonight. Either you're in or you're out. Say it. Say it. Either you're in, you're out. You can't you can't serve two masters. You can't be you can't be in the natural realm Come on. and then want to live in the spirit. Because you see, my grandfather, my, my father's father was a Christian, but he had a generation of curse of alcohol. Wow. Alcohol. He was a, he was a drunk and he couldn't shake that devil off. And because he couldn't shake the devil off, one day he got into a he got into a spat with the with the witch of the town. And the witch of the town told her. I'm killing you. You're going to see how I'm going to kill And your God can't do nothing about it. Sure enough, she killed them, the witchcraft. Wow. She killed them, the witchcraft, because he was a lukewarm Christian. Whew. He was a lukewarm, and he killed them. And that's how the lineage started in my family, because my aunt got into the witchcraft to revenge her daddy's death. And then when we came to the U.S., we brought the witchcraft to the U.S., wow. my, my, the lineage on my father's side. And that's how I... That's why that generation of curse came upon me because at the age of 30, my, my, even at, at the age of eight, as I started doing the ceremony, I started to see demons in my house. I went, I started, I started at the age of eight. I was already going to demonic church. Wow. At the age of eight. Age of eight, I was going to demonic church. I was sitting in the demonic church from seven in the evening to five in the morning. Say that again. Think about it. Whew. Seven in the evening to five in the morning. That's what they call behelia in the Spanish church or night vigil. That's what they don't, we, we don't do no whole night vigil anymore. Come on. We don't do that. We don't stay up at night for Jesus anymore. Say it. So, so in the demonic church, we have to stay up all night long for the devil. So we stay, I was eight, eight years old, losing sleep all night long, staying up for the devil, going to demon church, being trained. This is the thing that the demon church trains their people. Ooh. They're trained to have spiritual eyes and they teach you spiritual warfare. Say it. And then they, they teach you how to connect with demons. They have different powers, different power, different contract, different covenants. Because there's covenant in the demon, demonic ground because we copy everything that the church has. Wow. So we so we have them. We speak in tongues like y'all do. Say that. Say that. We speak in tongues. We speak in demonic tongues. We fall backwards in the spirit like y'all do. The only difference between you and the only difference between me and them now, I got the presence of God. They don't. Come on. I got. I carry the presence of God. They don't carry that. That's why they don't have nothing on me because I carry the presence. But everything, every format, every situation they have. And I did everything, all that situation. And then at the age of seven, eight years old, they're really teaching you how to make contact with demons, who, what, what demons, what spirits are in cemetery, what marine spirits are in the ocean, rivers, mountains, and you connect with these demons. What demons are on the second level of spiritual warfare in the second heaven? What demon principalities, really? And then demons on the first heaven, and then demons on the ground and territory spirit. You start to make contract. You start to understand the patterns and cycles of witchcraft, how to do witchcraft, how to take control over region, over people, how to shut down churches. How to, we are so organized. 
We are Ooh. so organized, so committed to the demonic work, the witchcraft I did on people, the animal blood, the killings of animals, screaming all night, drinking the blood, sitting and drinking the blood, chopping heads of goats, and then licking the blood out of the goat's head wow. live. You see the you should see the eyes of the goat, and then cutting myself and dr drinking my blood, drinking my blood, then sitting and, and then we had a pot. It's called the cardone. I sat by the pot naked all night long speaking to the devil and the devil will show up the aura of a presence of this monster will show up and talk to me in my conscience all night long when we can't sit in church for one hour and talk say to it, jesus say it so so we we so how is it that and then, then astral projecting i will i will learn how to leave my body and astral project i know how to put my body to sleep even the one i didn't want i know how to put it to sleep because i had a contract with a demon that which is called a civil court it's not really a civil court but it's just a meta metaphor thing of a contract with certain demons to ask to project. So I can, if I had an assignment to curse your family, if I had an assignment to break your marriage, I would ask to project, end up in your house, in the spirit, see everything that you were doing in the spirit and put the curse and put wow. the division in discord and put a I put a, a, a sexual demon on your husband so your husband can sleep with the hoochie and mess up the marriage. Wow. Wow. So I was, and I was getting paid. I was getting paid for all this. I was getting paid because in the witchcraft world, it's all about the money. That's mm. when the church makes it all about the money. When the church says it's all about the money, then you, 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 you're not but a witch. Preach. Preach. You're not but a witch. You're not but a witch. So when you hear this prosperity preaching, that's witchcraft. When you hear this mind control, uh, this mind control devils, people preaching, this mind control of, of, of bringing, instead of bringing conviction, they bring condemnation, that's witchcraft. I did it all. I, I know how to get into the mind, manipulate. Oh, you have to so see a thousand here. If you got ten say people it, over here, say you, a minute, you have a you have a spirit of witchcraft because you know God knows what the kingdom needs. God knows how to release it, and He knows who to trust it, who to trust it with. So, so, so another thing I, I wanted to say, I would take human bones, my brother. I take human say bones from the, from the cemetery because I had contract with people that can buy. You could buy. You could buy. Uh, I would say you could buy five. A, every human bone is five, it's a thousand dollars. Wow. So I'll buy human bone. And then the human bone that I would buy, it will be like from a cancer person that died. So I would take the human bone, make a contract with the cancer devil, take the bone and then and then wax it all night long to use the powder of the bone. It would turn down. And then I put your name on the brown piece of paper and in a coffin. And then I would spread it, spread it, and then start using calling you, calling you. I will that's why Christians that's why Christians, when they go to sleep, they wrestle. They wrestle in their sleep. They sleep, but they don't rest because someone is calling your name in the wow, spirit realm to put wow, witchcraft wow. and steal your spirit. But the, the Lord is protecting you. You're fighting Ooh. in the spirit realm. But you understand, you wake up in the next day and you say, I, I was warring all night. I was fighting all night. I don't know why I was fighting. I don't know what I was doing. It's the witches that are after your anointing. Wow. Because if I can strip you for anointing, it's like Superman. If I, if I can bring kryptonite to the fight, Superman don't mean nothing. Wow. If I can rob you from your anointing, Samson, you got nothing to fight with. So the demon, what they, what they do is witches will size you up and size up the size of your anointing. See, I would size up Christians and size up the size of their anointing. And I knew what to bring to the fight. And I knew your anointing wasn't strong enough to endure the fight. And then I, and then when I got into the spiritual realm in the fight, because it's a, there's a door to the spiritual realm that you, knew, you, know how to, you have to get in. And when you get into the spiritual realm, once I'm in that door in the spirit realm, I size you up. I size up your anointing. And then once I size up your anointing, I know what to bring to the fight because I know I do. You know how I, I do with the fight? I, 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 I use the 10 rounds of the fight because I wear you out. Wow. Wow. I, I said I wear you out. And if I can wear you out, spirit of distraction, bondage, distraction, stronghold, I bring all these spirits with me. Wear you out. So when the real fight shows up in the late rounds, you have nothing to fight with. And I got you. I put the nail on your coffin. Wow. And that's what I used to do. I was, I was, I was a PhD doing this to Christians. To Christian, and then I used to—I was—I had a friend of mine that would throw house parties and invite Christian. They go over there and get drunk, and I will come and steal this and steal the anointing. I will go wow. there and steal their soul. I will open the demonic door. Christians going into house parties, getting drunk. Christians going to clubs, getting drunk. It, Christians playing the game, playing the game, and the devils can't. You can't beat the devil in his territory. Ooh. This guy anoint you. And send you to the territory of the enemy, and then you can beat them. But you can't come and think that you got the armor when you're naked, spiritual naked. So I, I knew when the people had the armor, and I knew when they, one time I was leaving my building. One time I was leaving my building, and this is one thing God is so amazing. One time I was leaving my building, I heard this, so this crap. I heard this crap. It was like worship. I mean, it was worship. Praise the Lord. 
but at the time it was crap. I was a member worship. I said, who's playing this, na this nasty music in my neighborhood? And I came down and I went to the corner where they were standing at. It was a group of Christians. It was Nikki Cruz uh, people. Yeah, wow. Nikki Cruz. It was called Truce. Truce is Nikki Cruz, young, young people. So when I went, I released witchcraft upon them. And when I released, they released a fire right back and it hit me. Then all my witchcraft to the floor. And, and the witchcraft hit me in my chest. Hit me in my chest and it almost broke my chest. I felt like I felt like, like someone punched me right in my chest. I, I said, "What they hit me with?" I never, hit, I never had, I never had Christians hit me that hard. <laughs> God. <laughs> so, so, so I, I, I was trying to get my breath while my tears were coming out. That's how hard they hit me. They hit me so hard, my tears were coming out. I felt human. I felt I couldn't believe it. Then I chased them again to try to hit them again, and then a wall of fire came around them. I couldn't touch them, and it because they've been in the holies of holies. Wow. They've been with God, and I couldn't touch them. And even when I used to I should project and leave my body, that I used to curse read it. You see, if I could you see, my assignment was to leave my body, I should project and curse the region. Because if I can curse the region, I can curse the people. Oh. And that's why today, 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 if you look at the churches today at large, if you look at the churches at large today, I just want to get into this other part. You look at the churches at large today, okay? Let's be honest, let's be real. The churches are dead. Yeah. Why are they dead? It. Because it. they can't they can't handle the spiritual chemical warfare. That hit the church Ooh. because the devil, the devil has let re, de, demonic principality have got over the church, spew on the church, and put the church to sleep. So and true. The, it's called, it's called, it's called this. You fell asleep on the lap of Delilah. Ooh. You fell asleep in the lap of Delilah. Now Delilah has taken your hair, has taken your anointing, and 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 you're preaching Jesus, but you can't hear Jesus preaching to you. So, so that was my assignment wow. to ask to project and curse the region, curse the church. I would take the four corners of the corners of, of your church or, or your neighborhood. I find the location where the four corners split the crossroads of your region. I find it, the north, the south, the east, and the west, and I lock it down with animal blood and my blood. And I put it together and wow. mix it together. And I knock, I knock it down because it's a demon called Echu. A demon called Echu. It's a principality. You ever seen, uh, and the demon likes to drink blood. So I give mm. them my blood and the bloods of animals, and I put it in the corners. And, and then and then the demon etchel, that's why you see a lot of drive-bys. And how many people get killed in the corners? Wow. Say when you that. see drive-bys. Say that. When you see drive-bys, you see things happen. When a car jump off the corner and kill someone in the corner, when you see drive-bys in the corner, it's always a corner drive-by because that demon is requesting blood. Wow. Unreal. It's requesting blood, blood of young people. It wants blood of young people because you, that's how he maintained himself strong and hungry. And I had a contract with that demon. So I would actually project, leave my body, curse the neighborhood, weaken the neighborhood, bring down, I, used, I know how to bring down the four wall and then spare around. I know how to bring down the four walls of the church and leave them naked and then come in and then sit in the church. I will come to them, I will come to your service and sit in your church. Wow. Think about the, the demonic, wow. what the demonic disrespect I had. For the churches and God, I would get drunk. Come, I would get drunk. I would drink six, 16, 17 Corona. I would drink a pint of Bacardi lemon, drive my car, have demon possessed, and get in front of my house and tell God, God up in heaven. I look up in heaven and say, You come down, I smack in your face. Wow. You want none of this. Wow. I would tell Jesus Christ that I would smack him in his face. I mean, God, thank you for my <laughs> praise God that God Ooh. has to say, God, I mean, took my mercy, took my mercy. God could have sent a God could have sent lightning and, and dropped me dead at, at that very moment. But thank God he didn't. And I, I was all out of ignorance and stupidity that I spoke the way I spoke. And 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 one of the things I used to do, oh. it, it's I had a contract with Jezebel. I mm. had a contract with Jezebel. I had a contract with demons that that's why I don't understand how Christian were they were doing the ice bucket challenge. Come on, say it. Say it. The ice bucket challenge. When you were doing a contract with a demon, when you did the ice bucket passes, were doing ice bucket challenge. Wow! Who the heck you were challenging? One of my last ceremonies that I did, one of my last ceremonies that I did, it was called it was called Sansi, which is a Haitian ceremony, and you close the deal with the devil with the ice bucket challenge. Wow! You put ice, they bathe you ice, and Christians doing ice bucket challenge for what reason? Come on, are you? And what, for what purpose and reason are you imitating the devil? Wow. It, it's amazing. And, and, and as I was growing up into the demonic realm, every, every, every situation that I grew up in the demonic realm, it was closer 
and you don't meet the devil right away. Is you get close, you meet, you meet, you meet familiar spirits, mm. you meet territory demons, you meet demons on the first heaven, and then you meet demons on the second heaven, which are all principalities on the top there. And then you sit with the devil, and then you meet the devil. And my dad, my daddy got killed at 33 years old. He got shot in the face for a woman that wasn't even his when he had a good wife home. And my daddy used to beat my moms. He used mm-hmm. to be, give her black eyes every weekend. He would beat my moms. My daddy would demon possess because he was a warlock. And he would send me to the botanicas to buy ingredients. He would send me to the botanicas, not knowing that I was going to the botanicas being trained by wow. my dad. And my dad had contract with demons and warlocks. And me and my brother would see these demons and warlocks in our family, witches in our family. And these demons would walk around the house. We would see them like human beings in the house. My dad would turn the living room on fire and get, tell my brothers and I, take off your clothes. And he'll put us to the fire, sacrifice us to the fire. My, my father would do that. And me and my brother would have the worst nightmares, tormenting nightmares that we wake up screaming because the demons were trying to get into our bodies. And captivate our body were little, and the last, and the, and and like, and then I was the one that was chosen by the demons because I was the eldest mm. of all my brothers. And then my second brother was chosen second, and we were we were going to demon church together from seven in the evening to five in the morning. And my brother was my brother was transvestite, my brother was homosexual, he was bisexual, married to a real woman, and he was a warlock. Wow! Imagine that. That's my my second oldest brother and Jimmy. And do all the, I got I got married in Halloween, my brother. I got a demonic wedding. Tell in me Halloween, about October that demonic 31st. wedding. I got married in Halloween. I, I no one came to my wedding. I had a list of people coming there. said, we ain't going. No, no way. People, I had a demonic wedding, and we had principalities came and baptized my wedding rings with blood in wow. my own blood. My my and my wife, my, my my wife, my my wife at the time, we were wall. We got we got and then they put two candles together. They tied it with black and red string, which represents the devil, and they bury us in the ground, so the Gosh. death doors apart. And that demonic, and God broke that witchcraft from me when I when I got saved. And 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 and, I, and then and then I would go. I would sleep in cemeteries. I would sleep in cemeteries to get power. I see Christians sleeping on top of graves. Come on, sleeping on top of graves because they want to get that person's anointing. You getting demonic devils in your body. Wow. You getting demonic devils. Wow. You taking Say demonic it. demons. <laughs> How you gonna sleep? I'm gonna sleep on top of Catherine Crewman's Come on, grave because Come I on. want her anointing. I, 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 are you are you crazy? All you're gonna take home is demon, Come familiar on. spirit, mimicking Catherine Crewman. Because Catherine Crewman is sitting with Jesus having breakfast. She wants nothing to do with you. Come on. And her anointing, <laughs> her anointing is not hers. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. So how is it that we 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 we, we mimic the witchcraft world? Mm. But we don't we don't we don't, we're not great originals. Mm. We're not great originals. So even in, in, at the demonic wedding, drinking blood, uh, killing animals, getting married in the Halloween. Halloween is the most diabolical holiday Talk ever about Halloween. in the world. You, sac- you sacrifice your kids to the devil by dressing them up. You sacrifice Say your it. church by doing by doing harvest. There ain't no harvest. Harvest is out there. The little self. What harvest are you talking about? I mean, what kind, I mean, p- pastors with no anointing. Pastor without discernment. Ooh. They're out there celebrating these things, memorizing. Oh, dress your kid like Moses. Dress your kid like Joshua. Dress your kid like Esther. You're the demons Say it. that you're dressing your family with. Because Esther's not here. Moses isn't here. And, and, and Noah's not here. You're dressing because when you celebrate the holiday, no matter how you twist the name Say to it, it when you twist, you're still the devil's holiday. You can't take Good Friday and twist it to nothing else. It will still be Good Friday. Come on. It will still be Good Friday. You can't twist it. So we we come into the realm of the demonic and agreement with the devil and you sacrifice your kid. So when your kid is 15, 16 and he on drugs and your daughter is a, a prostitute, wow. you ask yourself, what? Oh, I, I grew up my daughter in church when well, she's sleeping around because you open the door. You wow. dressed her up like wow. little, you dressed up like the little mermaid and you dressed up like little Esther. In the demonic realm, I, my brother, I understand the demonic realm from the devil's side. I got mm. the devil's playbook. Mm. I got the devil's playbook from from eight years old to the age of thirty five. I got saved. The devil's play- I, I did all the ceremonies in witchcraft. All the ceremonies in witchcraft. That's why I was able to become a general, third high ranked devil worshiper in New York City. From New York City to Haiti, from Haiti to Cuba to Miami, and back to New York. I will actually project and go over to Europe and curse Europe. 
Wow. I was asked to project wow. and go to Europe. I never bridged at the time. I never got on a plane and been to Europe. I knew. I knew. Uh, I know what it looked like in the spirit because I would curse it. Wow. I would leave my body curse. Yeah, I would curse region. I would drink the, 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 the ceremonies of animal blood, the taste of my blood, the human bones, the, the witchcraft in Halloween. I leave, I'm leaving and then in December. It, December is the most organized month for the witches, the high ranked mm. witches, the real witches, the warlock, because they, they, they get, we fasting in January, the 21 day fast. But the witches got a beat because they're already doing their stuff in December. Wow. So in December, they're already moving principalities from one region to another, ushering different principality. They're setting up this demonic stage. So when we show up, when we show up in, in January while I'm fasting, they're already a month ahead of us. Wow. Unbelievable. It's like the witches that came out the other day, and they said on the 21st of June, they was going to do witchcraft. They knew what they were doing. They used the number 21. Mm. Not too many, not too many witches can use the number twenty-one without the devil's permission. Wow! Because if you if you use the number twenty-one without the devil's permission, the devil will kill you. You have to have permission. Now they're doing. Now they come. So I I got a week before, a week and a half before. I pray. I burned down the contract and spans and scrolls and covenant of the twenty-one. I dismantled the number. I I confused the devil's camp. I put confused between I put enmity between the between the witches and the warlocks and the altars and the demon. I shut down the first and second heaven. I paralyzed everything demon every demonic satanic thing sacrifices. I already cut. I already burnt it down with the fire god with the blood of Jesus. So when they came to the when they came to the fight, they were disarmed. They had nothing to fight with. So that's why nothing took place. That's why I say Donald Trump sent me to the White House. I take care of you witches. (laughs) I'll take care of you witches. Because Paula White ain't doing nothing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Paula White ain't doing nothing. Paula White talk about devil, but she can't confront him. And, and Jeffrey Roberts ain't going to do nothing either. Mm. Because you got to be born for this stuff. You got to be a spiritual sniper and special offer of Jesus Christ. Mm. And not that I'm better than them because I love them and I respect them. I respect their ministry. I love them. But listen, I'm not going to invite you to a spiritual warfare fight when you're supposed to be in the kitchen. Come on. Come on. So we, we so I, I, I want to say, you know, one of the things I, one of the things I lost, I lost all these years for my daughter mm. at the age of two to the age of 11. I saw my daughter to the dark side. I just she got ceremony done in Santeria with the, the main spirit called Ochum. So she can be, when I didn't finish, she can finish. My daughter was already dedicated to the dark side. She dressed for 365 days in white as the bride Satan. Oh. In five plus five days, because the contract you make with the demon is five days. Me five five number five belongs to Achun, number seven belongs to Yamaya, number nine belongs to Chango. Chango is a demonic. Sp- I had Chango, I had Setarayo, because the demons more they go into one spirit realm to another. So I had Setarayo Sarabanda in in the witchcraft world when I sold my soul to the devil. I got the mark covered. I got the mark twenty one carved into my flesh. Mm. Out of seventeen people, they sold their soul that night. There were screams that night. The devil came for the souls and the blood. And I sold my soul that night to the devil. And the only person that was standing that all the blood that was lost, because when you lose blood, you you, you get weak and you, you pass out. Mm. People passed out. And I was the only one, because I was the only one standing that night. And all these people passed out and they were screaming at night. Men, men Gosh. that were hardcore. Men that went to jail. Men that were hardcore people from the streets sold their soul that night. 17 of us sold our soul to the devil that night. And the only person that was standing to, to the blood sacrifices and my blood shedding all over the place. I have blood. I have marks on my chest here, marks on my back. They took a machete and they had to cut me here because they, the, devil wants your, the devil wants your mind. The, see, the wow, mind of Christ wow. is the Holy Spirit in you. So the devil had to cut you open here in order to let, to let the spirit come into your mind. So I, ha- I, ha- I have a cut. If you shave me, I have a cut here. I have a cut here. I got cuts in my back. I got cuts here and here. I got cuts here. Wow. Here. Wow. The, 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 I have cuts there. I got cuts in my arm to cross sideways, uh, backwards. All, the, all, the, all that blood came out. All that blood came out. And then the devil came at 12 o'clock and I signed the contract. And the only person that was still standing throughout the whole process that night, throughout the night, was the, and animals that we, we must have killed about 200 animals. And the only person that was still standing, you hear the animals wailing and screaming like you never heard an animal scream. Because the, because the demons came to drink the blood. And, and, oh. and then the blood was on the floor. The, the animal, you had to sleep on top of the blood on a concrete floor to finish your contract and wake up in the morning. So the demons can, mani- they can ma- manifest into your body. Mm. 
they can manifest into your body. And I went through all that process. And the only person that got the mark of the, the mark of 21 carved into this flesh, the 21 rolls to the dark side. I was the only person that carved that thing into the flesh. And the, and the, and the warlock, the guy, the guy that was a warlock, the guy, his name was Chago. The guy that was a warlock, he came straight from Cuba. And to, he was Fidel's right-hand man in witchcraft in Cuba. And he escaped Cuba dressed like a woman through custom because him and Fidel had a fallout. Fidel Castro him had a fallout. And he came to America. He came to Texas. And he was one of the biggest drug laws in Texas. Listen to this. He was one of the biggest drug laws. And his name was Chago. And he it shot him 45 times with a machine gun. And they rushed him to the hospital. And they said he got less than three days to live. Call his family. And the devil said he dies when he dies. Three days later, he walked out the hospital like nothing happened. Wow. Wow. Because the contract he had with the demonic world. Same thing. I had friends that were African American. They were, they were black Americans. Black American. And when they get demon possessed, they speak Spanish. Wow. I know little girls that were eight, eight years old, nine years old, get demon possessed and fly in the air. Stay in the air, flying like this. In the air. In the air, flying. Because the demon will get into their feet. See, the demon get into the, in, witch, in the witchcraft world, there's two ways the demon get in you. The demon, territory demons, demons on the ground, you have to take your shoe off when you go to demon church so they can come into your feet and, wow. and snatch your body. Wow. The principality, the principalities, I had my head shaved and I was dressed in 365 days in white plus seven. Seven is the number, the, the most powerful number in Santeria and the most powerful demon, Jemaya. Even when, even when I gave my life to the Lord and I, in my early years, I had the dream with Jemaya. She came out the ocean, this marine spirit. This thing, it was my, it's my first book. It came out the ocean. It was talking to me to try to persuade me to come back to the witchcraft world. And I told her in a dream. I remember in the dream, I was, I was talking to her. And she gave me this false peace that came over me. felt like the Holy Spirit. And she was talking to me. She said, don't you remember the days we had together? Don't you remember wow. how much I loved you? Wow. Don't you remember all the things that I did with you and I took care of you and I nurtured you in the spirit realm? Why would you want to leave that? Why, why, why would you want to leave us? How much we love you? We miss you, John. Come back. Come back. Even, and I said, no, I, I, don't, I don't think I can come back. I said, I don't think I can see myself coming back. I, I, I don't see, and me talking to this demon in my spirit at night, but she brought me, she took me out of my spirit and brought me to the ocean to talk to me, to talk to me. And, and it, was, it was such a satanic moment in my life. And my, my second satanic moment in my life was, uh, as a devil, still as a devil worshiper, I was still between two worlds, my brother. I was between Jesus and mm. and and the, and 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 the devil, and I, they 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 summons they the devil summons me to this meeting, and it was seven. It was about twenty something, twenty one people in this meeting, and the devil. I sat in the meeting, but I didn't want to be there because I felt like I was being attracted to Jesus, and I didn't want to sit in that meeting. And 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 the devil came out at twelve after twelve o'clock. The devil came to the meeting. He 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 captivated a person. It's called medium. He went into the person's body, and the devil looked at me and said, "My son, how you doing?" In demonic wow. tongues. Wow. And I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat it, but in demonic tongues, he said, "How you doing?" I said, "I'm okay." And then you're supposed to rep reply back in demonic tongues. So I would talk to him back in demonic tongues. He would talk to me, but we understood each other. Wow. We would, it's like talking English. Like you're wow. not talking right now, but we we I know what he was saying to me. And I was saying to him in demonic tongues. And he said, he said, you know what God throws out of heaven? I said, I don't know why. And he said, because he was jealous of us. And that's why he threw me out of heaven. Because he was jealous of us. And that's why he threw us out. What would, what would, so what would you say? I said, well, I don't have nothing to say at this moment. I told him. And he said, okay, I'm going to leave you with that thought. And I'm leaving now. But I come back and we'll talk again. And that's when I had to do <laughs> That's wow. why I had to. And, 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 and then at night. I would sleep in my bed and Jezebel would lay in my bed. And I would infiltrate. The devil wanted me, the devil wanted me to go to five, at least four to five clubs a night and look for Christians. Yeah, tell me you used to actually go in clubs and recruit people for Christ, the kingdom Christian, of darkness. For the devil, for the kingdom of darkness. I would recruit people for the kingdom of darkness. I would tell them, I, I, this is how you this is how they open I will open doors. I say, hey, you know what? I got something very mysterious to tell you. And when they say what? What did you have to tell me? You already gave me gateway into the spirit realm. Wow. I, already I already opened the door. Wow. See, when witches come up to me, when witches come up to me and say, hey, I got something to tell you. I said, well, let me tell you mine first. And then after I hit you with mine, after I hit you with my anointing, then you, if, you, if you're still here, then you can tell me whatever you want to tell me. Come on. So I, I, <laughs> so I know how to take the territory first. 
I know how to take some territory first because the devil's out the territory. Territory mm-hmm. in your home, territory in your mind, territory Come in your on. body, territory in your purpose, territory in your destiny, territory in your marriage, territory with your children. The devil is all about territory. He could take the territory, he could own legal rights. And if he can own legal rights, it become bondage. And it become bondage, become stronghold. And it becomes wow. strong, become bondage. He owns half of you. And that's why the church I love. There, there was a pastor that bought from the underground church to China, from China. They bought them to all the American churches, the big American churches. They bought them. And after they, they showed them all these mega churches, they asked them, what do you think? What's your feedback? What your heart says about all this in America? He said, I'm so surprised that you got this much done without the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I was like, God. <laughs> Well, I want this, this is this is my, my story right here. I was I came home from a club. Matter of fact, before I came home, over two weeks before this happened to me, I was gonna sacrifice my first human being. Wow. I came from a club, I parked my car, and the devil was sitting in the car with me, and the devil were having we were just having talk like like two homies. He said, John, how much you love me? I said, You know I love you. I said, I love you like my dad. Why would you question me on that? He said, There's a person on the twelfth floor. This is in the Bronx. He's on the 12th floor and he, he's going to try to mug you. But if you, if you, if, if you, he's going to be on the door to the left of the doorway to the roof. When you get up there, go behind the door. Don't be afraid of him because I'm going to be with you. I was going to have demon possessed. Wow. He said, you bring him into the, you bring him into the apartment. You stab him in the neck because I had the pot right next to the door. I had the pot, the meeting place. You see the 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 the, the, the tabernacle, of the, the holies of holies. Moses went in there and spoke to God. Moses, the tabernacle of the Old Testament, the pot with the bones, the cemetery dirt, the, the handcuffs, all the blood animal dirt. That is my meeting place of the devil. Wow. So I had that it weighed 150 pounds right behind my door. So make I, I was gonna, so I went up to the roof. I grabbed, tried to grab the guy and bring him to my apartment. He was he was dressed all in army fatigues. When I put my hands on him, he felt he felt he felt the devil. My eyes were burning red. So I was trying to drag him. He was trying to fight me off, and I was dragging to my apartment because I had nine I had nine machete knives into into my pot, and that's a, that's a different thing that you do into the demonic ground. Don't need to be explained in the pot because I don't want people to get ideas and try to do the same thing in the pot. So it represents every contract with nine different demons, nine different principalities. That's what that means. So I I was going to take my knife and stab him in the neck cut his arms off, cut his legs off, and cut his head off, and then put it to the demon so the demon could walk the earth like a human being wow. in the natural. So that was my contact. But he, got, he was so fast, he left, and I, I missed him. A week later, I was sitting in front of my television watching Jerry Springer. I, was, I used to love to watch Jerry Springer one time. That was a crazy show. Watching Jerry Springer, and for the first time, I heard the voice of God mm. say to me, my son, you know the voice of the devil. I know the voice of principality, territory, spirit, familiar spirits. I know every voice. I mean, I was connected with the voice of, of so connected with familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are the ones that do tarot cards. They're the ones that do tarot cards. They're the ones that set up Christians. When you go to tarot cards and you do, you call that 900 number, they tell you the past, present, and future. It is a demon talking to you about your past because familiar spirits know the past. They walk the earth. Mm. They know the present because they're the ones that afflict you. They're the one that afflicting you and bringing chaos into your life if you don't have Jesus. They're bringing chaos to your life. They're telling. So I'm the medium. I'm telling you about what's going on in your life. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm so impressed. You don't know me. He knows everything about me. That's the demon telling me that. Wow. Wow. So, so the demon is telling me about your past. Of course, familiar spirit, no. They walk the earth. They see your past. They see your present. Mm. Now, I t- now I tell you, now I tell you, what well, if you don't do the ceremony, if you don't know this cleansing, if you don't do the spell, Oh, your kids are going to go on drugs. I see, your, I see your oldest son going to a car accident. I say all these things to you like, oh, my God. Oh, your husband's going to cheat on you. He, your husband is, is, is chasing a woman. I will say all these things. And then you will say, I say, but I can fix it for you. Give me $5,000. I can fix it for you. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a lot of money. I said, well, if you don't do it in 30 days, it's going to happen in your, in your family. You leave. I send the demon with you. Wow. I send the demon with you. So you can't stop what you can't see. Wow. And now the demon wow. got legal now the demon got legal rights because you sat with the demon for an hour doing tarot, tarot cards. Now he owns the legal rights. So he goes with you, perform all these things, do all these things to you, 
destroy your life. You come back before within the 30 and say, oh my God, everything you did, everything you said happened. My son was in a car accident. Oh, my husband, I called my husband with a phone number in, in his pocket. I, my husband came with lipstick in his shirt. What I do, what I do? Give me the $5,000. I called the demon back. Everything goes back to normal wow. for a season. I already, I already banked you for five grand. I play that game. I have money on top of money when I play that game with people. And tell me about, there was a lady that, uh, a lady that came to you that wanted to kill her, the girl that her husband was cheating with. The tell mistress. Me, yeah, the tell mistress. me about that. Tell me that story. <laughs> that, that, that chapter was called Amazing Grace mm. in my book, uh, Out of Devil's Cardinal. Because she came, the lady came up to me. She said, hey, I knew the lady. She was into witchcraft, but not high level. Like low rank, low rank level witch. And she said, my husband is cheating on me with a woman at work. Mm. And I said, oh, really? I said, really? I said, and, and I knew her husband. I used to hang out with him and drink beers and, you know, hang out, listen to Spanish music. So I was like, oh, my God. And then she said, but could you kill the woman for me? And then he'll leave. she won't be in the picture. My husband won't be interested in her because she'll die. I said, sure, I'll kill her for you. Let me, let me talk to the devil, see how much money we're going to charge you. Right? So I, I thought killing her would be like 10 grand to kill the woman. The witchcraft I was going to do is going to be worth like $10. Mm. But, I, I, but she was walking. She, was gonna, she, told me, she told me the story in my house. She was leaving at the door. And she, she turned back and she grinned. It was like a Jezebel grin. She said, by the way, I forgot to tell you, she's a Christian. I said, oh, my, really? She's a Christian? How do you know? She said, yes, yeah, she's a Christian. I said, for sure? She said, yeah. I said, oh, yeah, I don't have to tell you how much I'm going to charge. I'll kill her for free. I hate wow. Christians. I, I, I hate those hallelujah people. I'll kill her for free. I said, don't worry about it. Give me her name. Give me her first name, last name, and a picture. She gave me the stuff. I bought a coffin box. I put the woman in it. I put her personality. I put her character. I put her, I put her thinking. A mindset. I put everything in there. I did, I put other ingredients in there. Don't we don't need to get into that? Other ingredients in there. animal blood, animal blood, animal blood. In an actual I put, coffin. I you put all this in actual I, coffin. Actual, I, yeah, actual coffin. I put a doll. I put a doll in there. I opened the doll up, right, and I put meat in there, right, and then I put a demon assigned to it, so her oh. inside garage. So her inside garage, and then I put a coconut, and I put all. I put different. I opened up the coconut. It's to open up her head. Wow. I open up the coconut. It's to open up a head. And I started putting all kinds of demonic things in her head and then shaking it. So if I shake it, I can confuse the person to commit suicide. Wow. Attached to a demon. So when I did all these things to her, 21 days went by. And the lady said, she's not dead yet. She's not dead yet. And I was like, how could she not be dead? So one day I'm sitting home kind of frustrated because I have to listen to this lady tell me the woman haven't died yet. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? This witchcraft will kill anybody. I know that. I got, I got this witchcraft from the pits of hell. This wow. witchcraft would have killed someone wow. in a week. This is nothing. I said, this, is, this, this woman should have been dead. The devil, one day I was sitting there and the devil comes in and said, I need, we need to talk. And I said, yeah. I said, what about? He said, you can't, you gotta, you gotta lay off that woman. I said, what do you mean lay off her? My reputation is on the line. Let's kill her already. Why are we having you killed her yet? I said, wow. why you haven't killed her yet? I did all the witchcraft. I didn't miss a beat. I did all the ingredients. I did everything. I've been up for 21 nights watching her and her funeral. I said, watching her funeral, I've been watching her through in my spirit in her funeral. And why she's not dead yet, the devil said, How God said, leave her alone. You Ooh, can't touch her. Come on. <laughs> wow. I mean, <laughs> think about it. This woman, I don't know her, never met her. Maybe she fell into sin out of ignorance. And God knew. Wow. And God still covered her. Grace and mercy cover her from me killing her. And God let her go. There was a guy that came into my, I had a, my, my, I had a Yorkie, mm. you know, Yorkie dog. Yeah. And it was my daughter. My daughter said, me and my mom going to a babysit the dog. I said, okay, when are you coming back? A week. I said, I'm going to do it for you because you're my daughter. I'm going to do it for your mom. I'm doing it for you. But I fell in love with the Yorkie. They took three weeks before they came back for the dog. I said, not your dog anymore. I claimed it. <laughs> I can't be the dog. So I kept the Yorkie. They, 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 they didn't want to get, they could take it. The dog fell in love with me. I used to give him McDonald's in the morning, McDonald's at night. <laughs> The dog fell in love. <laughs> the dog fell in love with me. So I turned around. I turned. The dog fell in love with me. So the, a, I lived in Parkchester in the Bronx. So in Parkchester in the Bronx, they have the security that if you come, you have a dog, they could knock on your door and give you a summit. There was like a, like the police without, mm. without being the police. But they patrolled the neighborhood. There was a community security. So they came and knocked on my door. And four guys came. Four guys came to my door. And three of them said, John, we with him. We with this guy, but we not with him. We know who you are. My, my, my whole door was full of animal blood. Wow. I would kill animals 
running right in front of my door. I will kill it and bathe my door with animal blood. Because you see, Moses put <laughs> we copy everything. Yeah. Moses put blood at the post of the door wow. for protection. Wow. So we take we take animals, we take black roosters, kill them, drink the blood, and put the blood that's left over on the door. So we put blood at the door for protection. The same thing they did in the Old Testament. We copy the same thing. So I had my my door was full of blood. The Jamaican guy that, that we used to clean my building, he would miss my floor. He said, when I come to your door, there's something so evil. I can't touch it. I, I have to run back down to the other floor. He said, I couldn't oh. touch it. So when the guy, they came, knocked, and the guy said to me, the, the three, the four police officers said, three of them said, John, we're not with him. We don't want to lose our job. We just came with him, but we're not with him. We know who you are. You're the son of the devil. And wow. we don't want no problems with you. The police we no were saying this. The no, police, yeah, four of them came. And the guy said, my, my, my uncle, he's a devil worshiper too. So I came here to give you a summons for your dog. I said, listen to me. How many uncles you got? He's only one. I said, get dirty. Because what I got for you and for your uncle, I said, you won't last a week. Mm. And I said, you're not gonna, I said, you're not going to give me a summons. I put witchcraft on this guy. By Thursday, he lost his job. He was accused of statutory rape. And he got sick. They fired him. I mean, I destroyed the guy's life wow. to witchcraft in four days. In wow. four days. That's the kind of contract I had. Uh, I gave people. People say, oh, my, my, my. Uh, and this is this is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. People come and say, my, my people come and say, hey, my, my, my husband got a woman pregnant. I will kill the baby in the womb with witchcraft. Kill the baby wow. in the womb. And I will put witchcraft in the person. Listen, my witchcraft was so, I was so demonic that one day two Jamaican guys, one Jamaican, one Haitian guy came to my door. They knocked on my door. I was married. I was still married at the young time. Me and my ex-wife, I uh, was still married. They came and knocked on my door. And they said, at three in the morning, they said, we are witches and this is our apartment. And I said, that's not your apartment. I rented from this lady. I got the lease. She said, she made up that lease. She rented from us. And she subbed, she subbed, said to you, she's keeping the rent. She's not paying up. We want you out of this apartment because we're going to do witchcraft. I said, really? I said, you know who I am? They said, no, we don't care who you are. I said, I'm the son of the devil. And the devil favored me. The devil loves me. And you're going to pay a price. My brother, I put witchcraft on them. I put witchcraft on the lady. I lived there for one year rent free. No one came to pick up the rent. Wow. I destroyed I destroyed them all. After one year, rent free, I tell my wife, let's just move out because no one's going to come pick up the rent. So we'll find another apartment. When I came to the street, I found a lady. She lost her mind. She was collecting she was collecting soda pop bottles in the streets. Homeless. The witchcraft I did to her. I made a home. I put witchcraft on my brother and put him in jail for five years. Mm. I put witchcraft on those two guys. One of them would be headed. One of them would be headed. I will put witchcraft on people just to see. I will go into I will go into ICUs and take death in one room and put it in the other so the other person can die for the fun of it. Wow. I will wow. people I will people I will put people in Bellevue. I know how to steal the person's mind and put them in Bellevue so they will lose their mind. I will put witchcraft on people just to practice my witchcraft to make sure my witchcraft stays sharp. Make sure that my contract with the devil stays sharp. One day they had a meeting, they left me out of the meeting. And I cursed the devil out. They called me the next day. Say, oh, you let the, we let you at the meeting. The devil's not happy with you. I said, I cursed the devil out. I said, all kind of stuff to the devil. The next day, the devil had a meeting with all these high warlock principalities, all these warlocks that have contact with principality. The devil had meetings with them. The devil said, I wanted to see where your heart was at with John Ramirez. And they said, the devil told him, I can kill every single one of you tonight. But John Ramirez, I love. He is my, he been my child since he been eight years old. He said, he'd he been, he been baptized in the demonic at the age of seven years old with that necklace that fell from the seventh heaven, from the second heaven, from the seven, seven, seven powers of darkness. He is my true son. I hate your people. I hate all of you. I'll kill you all. You ever mess with John Ramirez again, you all will be eliminated because whom I love. He does everything I tell him to the soul beating to me. He's so faithful to me because that's why he knows all the secrets of the kingdom because he's more faithful than y'all together. And, and it was, and they was terrified. Because they had a death sentence. And I went to I went to funerals of witches that died. There was one witch wow. that the devil said, I don't like there was one witch. She was high ranked witch. And the devil said to her, I don't, I don't love your, I don't love your 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 your, your partner anymore. Get rid of her. They said, she said, I love her. I can't get rid of her. Why would I want it? She was lesbian. She said, get rid of her. And she said, I can't get rid of her. I love her. You know what the devil did? Possess a homeless guy, took the, the homeless guy, took a hammer. And hit the woman over the head 17 times and killed them. Wow. Kill, killed the lover. And then the woman that disobeyed the devil, she got A's. 
the devil hit it so she can die. They could, she went to every AIDS test. She took every AIDS test in America, here in the US, here in, the, in New York City. They told her, you're, you're AIDS free. We don't find nothing. If she died when they did the autopsy, she had full blown AIDS. The devil hit it. Wow. There was another person. The punishment in the kingdom of darkness was crazy. There was another person that did a, he did a, every year you're supposed to do a celebration to the devil and the principalities, depending on which principality you've been crowned with in, in, in Santeria. He did, he did a party and he took the attention of the demon, the principality. He put it on himself. He did a fashion show. The next day they found, the next day they found him dead in his house, just stabbed 25 times. Wow. Wow. The number of that demon. So that was the punishment. Even, even in 1997, and I, I wanted to take a sabbatical because I wanted to be a good dad yeah, to my daughter for this. the first time. And I, I yeah, I, was, I said, I'm going to be a good dad to my daughter. My daughter deserves a good dad. My dad was nobody. My dad didn't take me to the park. My dad didn't buy me a bike. My dad didn't take me to Yankee Stadium. My dad didn't bought me a baseball game. Wow. I said, why should I be like, like that? To my, I'm going to be a good dad to my daughter. I'm going to try hard to be a good dad to my daughter. The devil took my eyes like a one year. I was registered with the commission of the blind as punishment no to way. take a sabbatical from witchcraft. Completely blind. They was training me how to walk with an eye seeing dog. They was training me how to phone money, how to know how to use money as a blind person. And one year later, my I, I dedicated my life deeper to the devil and my eyesight came back. In 1999, October, I had a list of hit. I, had, I was a hitman in the spear round. Mm. I had a list of people that I was going to put a hit on, the witchcraft. In 1999, I came in one morning from recruiting people from the dark side in clubs. And I sat there and God said to me, the Lord Jesus Christ said to me, my son, I'm coming soon. What are you going to do with your life? Wow. The voice, that voice was audible. The voice had a peace, but it had an authority in that voice. I shook myself. I knew every voice of every devil. I knew voice of demons, principality, territory, spirits, familiar spirits. I knew every voice. I had every contract you can imagine. In the mind. And I heard that voice. That voice has such an authority, mm. but such a peace. I mean, it was indescribable. I knew that was a new voice. I said, that got to be the voice of Jesus. And I, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't shake it off. And I left it alone. And I couldn't shake it off. And then a week later, I sat on my bed for the first time ever. I was depressed. I was oppressed. Mom, say it. And I, didn't know, I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't know what to do with myself. I said, maybe I commit suicide and my daughter can keep the money. Because even though I was a bad father, I loved my daughter. You mess with my daughter, I'd kill your goldfish. I'd kill your dog. I'd kill your cat and witchcraft. That's how crazy I was. I was demented. I didn't have a conscience. When I had to do witchcraft to some, some mother to kill her baby in her womb, I, you, 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 you gotta be so demonic yeah, and yeah. so out of conscience. I was so out of conscience in my spirit, in my life that I did witchcraft on people. I destroyed marriages. I destroyed people's family home. I destroyed people with car accidents. I destroyed, wow. there was a lady, there was a, a lady came up to me. She stole $20,000 of a foot locker. And she said, I'm going to jail. Could you get me out of this? I said, give me $10,000. I'll get you out. I did witchcraft to the lawyers. They got into car accidents. Wow. They, I put confusing and I put confusing into them. She never did a day in jail, but she was a prisoner of the devil in the spirit. Wow. Because whatever doors you open wow. to the devil, he's gonna collect. Mm. And all that witchcraft, all that demonic thing. And on top of that, I sat in my bed, sat in my bed. I told my, I said, I don't know. And then I went to I, I, this is the part. I went, this what church ain't ready for this. Church ain't ready for this. Not that I'm not glorifying the devil. I hate Come the on. devil. I hate witchcraft. I hate the satanic. I hate the dark side. I hate this. But the church, how is it that I go to church? I sit there Come as on, a devil worshiper. I get demon possessed in the church. I grab the pastor by the throat. I pick him up in the air. He's turning blue in his face. And he can't rebuke the demon wow. out of me and save himself. Wow. He can't even save himself. Meanwhile, you have to have like 10 to 12 men to get my hands off his throat because he was dying and, and the grips on my hand. The devil had him in the throat like this, picked him up in the air, choking him. He was he was turning blue and he couldn't rebuke the demon out of me because he had no power. Wow, wow. And it happened twice before I sat in my bed and I said, Jesus, I don't know who you are. I hate you. I don't do nothing with you. Your church is weak. You have Come no on. power. I don't hate you. My father, what were you when my father used to beat my mom? What were you when me and my brothers went hungry? What were you when I had to sit by the window as a young little boy 
and watch it. People won't burn the building down because only three family and the family was the family was supposed to be 30, 30, 40 family building. Only me, my brothers, and that family we were squatters as a little boy, squatters, nothing to eat. What were you? What were you? What were you, my mom? What were you? 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 you didn't do nothing for me. You didn't beat my dad up. You didn't took you didn't you didn't took the blows in my mother's face. You didn't take the blow. I went hungry. You, I, I, we, we, we had to go to school to eat breakfast because there was no breakfast in my house. I ain't serving you. You weak. I said, I want nothing to do with you. Wow. I said, I would, I'd rather die. I'd rather die and go to hell before I become a Christian. Wow. But, but that night, I was falling to the anesthesia sleep. And all I said was, if you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, then you show me tonight. Wow. And Jesus, and Jesus, took, the pe- Jesus took the Pepsi challenge. Jesus turned around, took me out of my body, put me in this train. I was going hellbound. This train was so real. This train was it was more real than the oxygen you breathe. I was on this train hellbound. Jezebel was on the train calling me traitor. The train was going so fast. I mean, I never seen nothing this fast on the earth, this speed on the earth. The train was going so fast. And people in the train, you couldn't see their faces, but you could see the fear. And you could see the fear on them. They knew they were going to a place that they weren't coming back. Wow. And the train hit hell. And when the train hit hell, the doors opened and this, this fire, this, this heat came into it. And I stepped, when, I, when you step in hell, when you, the ground breathes like a human person, the ground goes, wow. The ground breathes, it's alive. Hell, hell, it's like a body, it, it's alive down there. And then when I, when I stepped into hell, the first thing I said, I don't, I don't belong here. What am I doing here? Of course you belong there. Wow. Your decisions take you there. Jesus never sent no one to help with your decisions do. Mm. So I, I, I fell into I, and I started to walk in the ground. Then I saw some people from the witchcraft. And I said, what are you, what are you doing here? How, 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 how do we get out? They said, maybe you go that way. They were pointing fingers. But the, the people that were alive on the earth, they were still alive on the earth. That means they're, they're not making heaven. That's what God showed me. They're not making heaven. They're not going to repent. So I'm walking to the portals of hell. And, and as, as I walked, it, it, got, it was so pitch black. And you, all, it was like a narrow... It was like a narrow tunnel, and I, and I ended up in this tunnel, and I was trying to find my way out. Window, door, whatever it takes. Just give me a door. Give me mm. a window. But every time I step on the ground, you can hear the ground breathe. It's like it's like yeah, it's like when you tum- when you fall, yeah. you go, huh, when you like the ground was breathing now, and then the fear in hell, the fear in hell, it wraps around you like a person. The fear in hell is alive. It, it's not like the one here, like you're driving your car, someone cuts you off, you panic. Or whatever you shake it off that's nothing compared to the one in hell wow. the one in hell it, it's, a, it's like a person grabbing you in a bear hug and you see the torment it's like a torment on you and you can't shake it off and and your heart wants to come out of your chest your heart wants to come out of your chest. and i'm running to the portals of hell and as i run i hit the ground breathing harder and then i hear a wailing a wailing like like this 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 cry like 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 a, like I, I can't even describe the cry that you hear in the background and you know that that, that, that cry is so demonic so so like unreal mm. and then and then you feel like you feel like things are on your face you feel like things are on your face and and you and the desperado thing comes on you as i as i walk to a part of hell the devil comes out he said he said he'd come out he said john i loved you you're my son wow you're my son since the age of eight years old what what are you doing to me why are you leaving me i'm so heartbroken i'm so disappointed first of all the devil can't love you you made an image of god come on hello you made an image of God. So, so I said, I don't know what to do. I said, he was talking to me in the mother tongue. I said, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm so confused. Where am I here? What am I doing here? I, I don't know what to do. I'm not leaving you. I promise you. I'm not leaving you. I'm just, let me, let me get my thoughts together. He said, you're leaving me. You're leaving me. I know you're going to leave me. I know you're going to leave me. I, why would I, why I made a mistake. I taught you all the secrets of the kingdom of God, the pattern of cycles of repeat, the entrapment I put on human being, how I created all these religions to trap human beings, to turn my role to the dark side. I trade, I make, I let you get contracts of demons and principalities and territory demons. I, I, I groomed you from the age of eight years old. I grew, I hand groomed you. I, I protected you from people that are trying to kill you and hurt you. And I was there for you all the time. You owe me. Don't leave me. You owe me. I said, but I, I know, I know, but I, I say, and then he wants to grab me. Then he said, I'm going to, I have to grab you because I have to destroy you as much as it hurts me. I have to destroy you because you, you, you would turn on me and you would tell people about me. Wow. And I, and I said, no, I won't. No, I won't. When he went to grab me, the cross, Ooh. Jesus Christ up here, the cross, how could a cross, a three foot, the rugged cross of three feet appear in hell when I have shorts and a t-shirt? 
and the devil when the devil went to Grammy, there was there he the, the, the cross intercepted him. Wow, and come he fell on. to the he felt he fell to the ground like nothing. As he fell to the ground like nothing, I took off again into the deeper parts of hell. And the tunnels are like this in hell. They're like they got curves, and I'm, I'm curving to the tunnels and trying to find a way out. And then I, I feel I feel I feel something even more evil coming. And it was him again. Mm. This time his his horns came out. His horns came out. He I mean he was so he was like, you ever seen someone that looked like a lobster that took a suntan in the mm -hmm. beach? Like that? He was that color? Wow. In and out. He was in and out. And he told me, I'm going to destroy you. As much as it's going to hurt me, I have to destroy you. I don't want your spirit to go back into your body. I have to kill you. And when he went to Grammy, I said, no, don't kill me yet. Let me show you some. Show him the marks. I said, see these marks here? That's going to kill you. I said, that's going to kill you if you touch me. He said, fool, that's my contract. I own you. That's why I gave you that contract because I own you and I came to collect. And when he went to Grammy again, the foot, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell. I mean, amazing, amazing grace appeared in hell. And when he went to Grammy again, I shot into my body like an arrow. All I could tell you, when I went into my body, I felt like I was in ICU and people were doing these electrical paddles on my chest mm. to trying to bring me back. That's, that's the, most, the, the, the thing I felt. And when I came back into my body, Jesus Christ said, I'm giving you one chance and one chance only to repent and come follow me. Come he said, because you, you, you are wicked. You were the worst, but I give you a chance to come live for me. I, my brother, I had a hundred thousand dollar witchcraft in my house, human bones, skulls. I had cemetery dirt from all nine cemeteries of the five boroughs. Wow. I had dirt. I had dirt from different, from different jails. Because I can take dirt from different jails and put it on you and put you to jail. Wow. I did that to my brother. I put my, I put my brother, I had, because there's a demon that operates in the jails. He's a territory of jails with handcuffs. I put my brother in jail for five years. Wow. I, my own brother put him in jail for five years through witchcraft. I had, de I had jail from the psychotic, most psychotic places in the world that people lost their minds. So if I take that dirt and put your name in it and, and put a demon on it, and steal your mind and put you in those places. They put a straitjacket and send you there. I had that kind of connection. I had those, I had covenants and contracts with demons from the oceans to the rivers to the mountains on the second heaven, first heaven, territorial. That I, those contracts were the contract, the demons that I was able to operate and go into like the cemetery with 21 pennies and candles. And that, that's initiation to get in because that was my sign that I had permission to go in and buy demonic spirits to put it on you so you can die the way they die. Oh. And I had all these contracts, drinking animal blood, marrying Halloween, put witchcraft on my daughter so she can be the next uh, Jezebel. Okay, all that, and Jesus, Come Jesus on. still wanted me. Jesus still wanted me. And, it, and, 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 the, and the grace of God took, took me. And when I went to church, people said, oh, that's demon boy. That's demon boy. He got no calling. He got nothing. He's wow. just demon boy. You know, he's demon, but just buy him a Bible and put tabs on it. He's stupid. He don't know nothing. He don't know nothing. But Jesus never stopped loving me. Jesus Come said, on. Jesus said to me, I, I, Jesus said to me, I loved you from the very beginning. I was with you when your mom was getting beat up. I was Come with on. you when you Come went on. hungry. I was with you when you were in the abandoned building squatting with your family. I was with you all the days of your life. I'm going to be with you. You're going to be my vessel of honor. You're going to be on. the one that I'm going to use against the devil's camp to destroy, to dismantle, to up, to curse at the root, to shut down the heavens and don't let it operate, confuse the demons, confuse their languages. I'm the one you're going to use, that you're going to be my weapon in my hand, in my hand to destroy the enemy and set the captives free. You're going to teach my church how to spiritual warfare. You're going to teach my church Come how on. to fight back and take the territory. Ooh. Because when the revival comes, when the revival comes, the Lord said, when the revival comes, Junkies are gonna get saved. Come on, Alcoholics come on. are gonna get saved. Prostitutes are gonna get saved. Ain't gonna be no good people getting saved. All these people are gonna have residue. What are you gonna do with the residue of these people? They might get saved, but they're gonna still have residue. What are you gonna do? How are you gonna teach them? How are you gonna disciple? How are you gonna set free? How are you gonna walk them from one? How are you gonna walk them from one side of the red sea to the other so they can have the victory? He said, "You gonna write books? You gonna do?" I mean, God told me everything, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, "I thought God made a mistake. I thought I thought come He on, picked the wrong address. <laughs> I thought He picked the wrong address." And all through all this. And people laughed and people, it took a year and a half before they took me out to a fellowship. Wow. It took, it took a year and a half before they invited me. One day I got invited to return tuxedos and I sat in the back of this little Astro van. It looked like we were crossing the border. We stole something. 
and all the Christians in there was like seven Christians in there. I was like number eight sitting in the back. They were like, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh, pastor preaching awesome message. What a wonder, all this stuff they were saying, right? They said, John, what do you say? I said, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say hallelujah. I don't know how to say these things. I, I don't know. They were laughing. And today, the only person in that whole van is serving Jesus Christ is me. Come on. Wow. You see, because I, I wrote a contract with Jesus. The same way I wrote one with the devil. I wrote one with Jesus. 700 Club got the contract. The 700 Club got, the, got a hold of the contract. They said, I'm doing life in Jesus Christ. I want no parole. I'm on death row. Come on. And I signed it. I said, Jesus, this is between me and you. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do and we, I said to Jesus, we're going to do and die to the end together. I'm riding with you. Do it all, my brother. Do it all. And then in 2002, the devil sucker punched me, took my eyesight for three and a half months. I was legally blind again. Wow. Chris, on Good Friday, I had four hours of surgery. And when I came out to surgery, the doctor said, listen, there's no hope for you. You blind. So go home and pray for a miracle. I went to church to worship the king. On Good Friday, I, I called my friend up. I said, come pick me up. Take me to church. He said, but the doctor said, you should stay home. I said, I'm going to church to worship the king. Because I'm going to worship Jesus in my condition, not in my victory. Wow. I'm going to worship him on this side of the Red Sea, not when I cross over. So I worship Jesus. And one day, I, one day, I was in church. And the Lord said to me, John, you remember my 1997? I said, yeah, Lord, I was blind. He said, I, I, the devil never gave it back. I said, I was the one. You gave wow. the devil the glory. Wow. He said, you gave the devil the glory, but I was the one that gave you eyesight. I was the one that gave you eyesight today. And today I got 2025. Come on. The doctor, the science can explain. Come on. How do I got my eyesight back? It can explain it. How my eyesight came back. And how is it that I'm not legally blind? It's on paper. It cannot be explained. Come on. So I've seen so much in Jesus Christ that I don't doubt no more. I'm fearless. I'm movable. I'm shakable. Do I get sucker punched yet? Do I get back up and I get back? I bring it to the devil that he never seen in his life. I'm more determined than the enemy. I'm more mm. determined than the witch. I've been to, I've been, I've been in the Caribbean where the witches at. They come to my meeting, warlock. He come to my meeting. He said to me, I'll destroy you and I'll destroy your meeting like this. And I said, really? I said, did you bring all your arsenal with you? Because when I open up this can of whipping on you, on. I told him, I said, <laughs> I said, you, Fire I said, I, I want to make sure it's a fair fight. I, I challenged Madeline Manson. I, his girlfriend got saved because I did deliverance for her. Come on. Madeline Manson. I said, I told him too. I left him a message. I said, when I go to California a lot. Whenever you want to meet a bunch, you let me know. I said, because once I lay hands on you, you will never rip a Bible about again. Because we need to confront the devil. Yes. This is what's going on, on with the church. Come on. This say is it, say the it. church. This is, this is the church today. The church is spiritually anemic. Yep. The church is preaching a Jesus that is not in the Bible. Wow. There's no way in the Bible the, the church that the church is preaching. We're preaching a fantasy to people. Mm. We're preaching a fantasy to people. We are the sons of Skeever of the church today. We're wow. casting our little demon. Wow. But when the real show won't show up, when the real demon shows up, he says to the church, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, who are you? Wow. In other words, you have no authority. You have no authority to deal with me. You have no authority. I don't see no rank on you because see, the devil understands rank mm. and authority. The devil understands rank and authority. If, if God giving you authority and God giving you rank in your kingdom, the blood of Jesus, the God giving you that, the devil understands that there's, there's the blood of Jesus and you have authority in Christ. So the devil knows he has limits with you. Mm. He has limits. So the devil has to, you know what the devil has to do? He had the devil has to, that's why we need the sermon in the church. We don't have the sermon in the church. He said, the sermon is gone. That means we are spiritually flying blind. Oh. We're spiritually flying blind. So, so when the devil shows up, he throw a kind of he throw a kind of a kind of fight. You jump in the ring with the kind of fight. He wear you out. Then the real fight show up and he beat you down. Mm. That's why David was so amazing. David was so amazing. That's what David said. David said. David said was so amazing. David every time he had a fight, he said, "Lord, should I pursue? Is this my fight?" This is my fight because if you don't go before me, I ain't going to that fight. Mm. And Christian have, Christians, we have we don't have discernment in the church anymore. We got Jezebel sitting in the front seat. We got people that are demonically insane. We got people that are tormented. We got we got Christians on on Prozac, on medication, high blood. There was a lady that came to Queens a couple of years ago. She said, John, she came to the altar and then she said, I'm sick and I'm dying. She said to me, I said, What do you mean you're sick? You're dying. You're Christian. She said, No, I'm a Muslim. 
She said, my bones up. The doctor said, I got less than six months to live. She said, so I just came here for my last hope. I said, what? I said, what Muhammad done for you? What Allah done for you? She said, you just heard me. She said, I got a six months, less than six months. The doctor said, go home and make peace with my family. I said, but my Jesus can save your soul and can heal your body. You, you want it? I said, you want it? I said, you just say yes so we can beat this devil down. Come on. Just say yes. I said, just say yes so we can beat this devil down. She said, give me Jesus. She got saved. We beat that devil like a pinata on a Mexican party. Come Candy on. came out of that devil. Come on. Candy came out of that devil. She went, she went, listen, she went to the doctors and she said, could you check me one more time? That's what I said, lady, go home. We told you you're going to die. Make, let it sink in your head. You're dying. She said, please check me one more time. The doctor said, I'll check you one more time. You come back, we call the police on you. Doctor check her. She had no trace of cancer. Come on. She Come said, on. she said, I bring more. You know what she said to me a year ago? I saw her. Mm. She said, I bring more people to church than my own pastor. Come on. Come on. That's real. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I seen I see miracles after miracles after miracles because you're dealing with demons. Mm. You de when you deal with the demon, if you know how to grab that demon throat, you can release that person from the torment. If you know how to break patterns and cycles, you know how to release that person. If you know how to break contracts and covenants from that person that made, you know how to release that person from the spirit realm. And if you can release the person from the spirit realm in the contracts that the person made or the tormenting devils or the generational curses, if you can go into the spirit realm in the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and you can destroy that contract and cuss it to the root and let it strip up and die, that person could walk into the natural realm and be free. I love it. And I think so many people we've had, uh, I know you don't know this, but we've had about 1500 people on 15 to 1700 live this entire time. And I know why it's a testimony to the fact that so many churches, I'm not even going to say it, but if I said type one in the chat, if your church doesn't talk about spiritual warfare or doesn't deal with the demonic, we would have thousands of people typing one because this is where we're at as a body of Christ. And you know, when you said that you were not threatened by churches when you were uh, in the satanic no. kingdom, you were not threatened at all. You were not afraid no. at all. They were the they 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 my favorite. They were my favorite because they're the weakest. And there's no prayer happening. There's no holiness happening. So, uh, so was there actually witches and warlocks that are going into churches that are being a part of churches and destroying them from the inside out? Tell me a yeah. little bit about yeah, from that. The inside. Yeah, from the inside. We got Jezebel eating up eating up the church. We got a lot of spirits, seducing spirits in the church today. We we have we have we have chemical warfare. The church is asleep. In, in the book, in the book, Matthew 25, we talk about the term virgins, right? Mm -hmm. They looked the same, they had the same lamp, they had the same oil. But when the fight came, when the real fight came, they had nothing to fight with. That's why they wow. stood outside the door, knocking, knocking. And then when Jesus took the see, the churches looked like the fig tree. That's why Jesus cursed the fig tree. From far, they look like Christian. But when you get close and examine, wow. there's nothing there. Wow. You see, so that's why Jesus cursed the fig tree because the fig tree like a fig tree. They have fruit. But when Jesus came and close and examined, it had nothing. So it reminded them of Adam and Eve. So we 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 have religion. You can cast out religious devil to a certain point. That's why the sons of Sceva, they have religion. They can wow. cast out a religious devil. So they had a religious devil, they can cast out. But when the real devil showed up and said, Who are you? They caught a beatdown. And the church is catching a beatdown. Not all churches, but the majority of the church are catching a beatdown. Yep. The past is lusting. The past is on yep. pornography. The past is lusting. And I'm not judging. Let's say the truth. Because you know, you know, you know, you know what's crazy about this, Savior? This is what's crazy. If you were to take a mic, I preached this one time. Testimonies in hell. Mm, wow. I preached testimonies in hell. If you were to take a mic and put it in hell today, you will love the, for everybody in hell. Everyone in hell. Everyone. Not including, not taking, not no one. Everyone in hell. If you put a mic in hell. Everyone would like to hear the word repent one more time. Oh, wow. And, and today you tell the church, repent, turn from your ways. God is going to spit you out. You, you think that you're prospering, but you're spiritually naked. You see, the church thing, because they, they think they're prospering on the outside, but the inside, they're, they're deteriorated. In the mm. spirit, man, in the inner man, the church is deteriorated. The church got nothing to fight with. People get, listen, I've been to California. And demons show up at my altar, and people could testify. I'm not saying this by my own saying. No, people could testify. Demon come up to me. The demon confronts me. I said, "Listen to me. Listen to me. Come on. I tell them in the name of. Listen to me. Sit down. I will take care of you later. You ain't right. You're not gonna mess up my service. Come you on. crazy? Sit down. The demon goes and he sits down. I said, "I come. I come for you later. But I'm gonna preach first, and you're gonna hear the preaching first. Come on. <laughs> you're gonna hear the preaching first. You're gonna hear preach. 
I, I, I pray for people that were so demon possessed that their parents took the parents took a plane and came to Houston and said, thank you for God using you to set my son free. Wow. Okay. I pray for, I pray for this young man. He came, he came up to me and said, pray for me. I, he had a, he had a, he had this bit on your show. You, any witch that want to come on this show and bring it on, come bring it on. I'll show you the power of God. And I will strip it from your authority. I will burn your bands and scrolls, your contracts and demons. I know how to burn them down with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And I know how to make you spiritually naked with all your demonic arsenal. I know how to strip the witches in your spare round. I know how to destroy them. I know how to cut the civil code when the astral project. The church needs to learn this because if we don't know spiritual warfare, my brother, Come in on. the last day, we're not going to make We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it because it's not God's fault. God said, it's finished. I give you everything that you need to fight the good fight. Paul said, Paul said in his, in his life, 2 Timothy, which is his, his will testament, Paul's will testament and 2 Timothy, that was the last epistle he wrote. Paul said, he told Timothy, I fought. And he said, I had ice cream. Come I had on, a peanut butter jelly on. sandwich. I, I had a donut. I had I had Krispy Kreme. Paul didn't say that. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I ran my race. Mm. Now I go home and get my crown. And those that do the same will get their crown too. Power Come phrase on. what Paul said. Paul said, I fought the good fight. Paul was afflicted. Paul Paul resume was amazing. What he went through, he went through it. He never asked God to take it away. Only one time about the thorn in the flesh, he asked God to take it away three times. God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. But the bottom line, Paul knew how to go through the fight. Paul knew how to go through the storm. Paul knew how to go through the through, through, through the rain, through everything. Paul knew how to get to the other side. Because Paul had an anointing. He had a relationship. He had an, he had an encounter with the living God. He had the Holy Spirit on him, in him, and through him. Paul knew. How to, he knew the secrets of heaven, the strategies of heaven, how to dismantle the kingdom of darkness. Even Paul, listen, listen I want to say one thing. Yeah. When the witch, the slave girl, yeah. listen to this. I practiced, I practiced this in witchcraft. When the slave girl, no one knows this in the Bible. When the slave girl was saying to the people, they're the son of the most high God. Remember that? Yeah. The, the slave girl was saying, all right? Yeah. Follow these men. They're the son. Because the slave, that demon knew that they was going to leave. And if the demon knew he could validate them, if he knew if he knew he could validate Paul and Silas, when they leave, he they can take over the people because the people are gonna say, Well, they validated them. That means the demon that the witchcraft as spirit as a, as an angel of light is crazy. Wow. You see, so I know how I know how to validate people in the kingdom of darkness. Say, yeah, we serve God we finish, with God we finish, with God we start, with God we finish. I would tell people, yeah, I do the same thing you do. Well, don't you go to don't you go to church? We go to church too. Don't you lay hands on people? We lay wow. hands too. Don't you? Do you speak in tongues? Yes, we do. I speak in tongues too. You want to hear me speak in tongues? I would say that. But people can hear me speak in tongues, and they thought I had the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because they had no discernment. Wow! And that is exactly what it is. There is no discernment right now in the body of Christ. Someone actually sent me. I think no. they're in the chat. They sent me a video of a famous about five famous pastors. I won't mention them because we all know them. Uh -huh. We're on stage, I think it was a week or two ago, and this lady, and you could YouTube this, okay? If you want to find this and you do enough research, you'll find it. But this was a couple weeks ago. She literally had a staff, a witchcraft staff, and she started talking about the Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings. And on stage, she said Gandalf slammed his staff and said the enemies can't pass. And she had all the pastors. This is a famous church. Some of these guys I thought were legit until this moment. She had all the pastors put their hands on the staff in the church on stage and they all slam the magic staff down and they're they're literally on stage doing witchcraft in the church and people see nothing wrong with it. And releasing the demons, oh, releasing yeah. those in, demons. In the church. And these are, the these are famous pastors yeah. that a lot of us follow. A lot of us read their books. Their books are in all the Christian bookstores. But it just shows the blindness that has come over the church. And I'm telling you guys, God has raised up John Ramirez as an end-time watchman. He's exposing. I know a lot of you, there's been over 8,000 comments tonight. I know a lot of you are just blown away because you didn't know any of this. But this is God opening up your eyes there's been about 1,500 of you. Listen, here's the deal. I'm going to sow into him tonight, no matter what you guys give. But I'm telling you guys, partner with what God is saying, because we need to get this word out. We need more people getting trained in spiritual warfare boot camp. We need more believers hearing this type of preaching, hearing this type of spiritual warfare, because the time to sound the alarm is now. It is time to blow the trumpet in Zion, to sound the alarm, to gather the people, and to train up for spiritual warfare now is the time, and we were talking before this, not only are we going to do more live streams together, training for spiritual warfare, but I told him I want to bring him on, introduce him to the audience, 
But I really believe when this all whole ridiculousness of COVID is done, we're going to do an event together, me, him, and Alexander Pagani. I'm speaking it. Are going to do a deliverance and the spiritual boot camp event together. I'm telling you guys, what God is doing is unstoppable. There's no demon. There's no power. There's no principality that could stop what God is doing right now, what God is saying. So get ready, guys. Buckle up. This is only the beginning to what God is doing. We are exposing the enemy. I can't even imagine, John, how many people you had following you, how many witches were trying to kill you. Even to this day, I bet you had people trying to follow you because coming out of that lifestyle, I don't know anybody else but you that has come out of that high level lifestyle and is now preaching and sharing the gospel the way you are. I mean, were you getting followed when you came out of this lifestyle? Were you getting death threats? What what did that look like when you came out from this this crazy lifestyle? You know, one of the things I I, I want to say is that's why one of one of the things I want to say is it's just it's a, I'm I'm writing a book. Uh, coming up next, I'm writing, I just want to say something real quick. I'm yeah, writing yeah. a book. It's called the day, it's called the day after deliverance. Wow, that's and, so and, good. And the, and the book the book is going to be about. And I just want to share. It's going to be on next October. I, I got to find this manuscript by December by uh, Bethany House chosen. They the one that uh, going to have the book and release it. But it, it's about how Christians get set free, but six months later they're back in bondage because wow. it's like it's like it's like the storm comes. Right, it's like a, 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 a real storm comes. Like say Puerto Rico got hit by Maria, right? Puerto Rico got hit by Maria by the storm. How do you rebuild after the ashes? How do you rebuild to make your house stronger? Your str- the house is you. How do you make it stronger for the next storm, the next attack, the next temptation, the next trial, the next tribulation, the next testing? How do you make your house stronger? So when the devil comes, he can't find nothing in you. To so build the body of Christ, that the body of Christ, you might lose the you might lose the window. But you're not gonna lose the house. Come on. You might lose a you might lose a, a, a maybe a tile from the ceiling from the roof, but your house is still standing. So I I, I want to teach Christians how to hold the ground and bear fruit in the midst of the storm. In mm. the midst of after the storm, you become a stronger, more powerful, unshakable, unmovable Christian, fearless for Jesus Christ. You'll be an arrow in his quiver that Come he can on. trust you with in the storm. And that's what I want to teach Christians today. And 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 I and I and I say one more thing, one more thing with you. That's why I did the e-course. Mm. The e-course is an eight weeks training for people to understand how the demonic works, how the spirit wow. works, and how how you got the victory. Come on. And you don't know it. And how it's eight weeks of training with a spiritual warfare book you can download. And then you got arsenal spiritual warfare prayers to break everything off you and set you free mm. that's why i tell people you know you know what's funny about this thing that the people that's running my e-course and i want to share this quick testimony yeah, go ahead, go ahead. bring it up no go ahead i want to share this testimony before i get into the other spiritual warfare this is called a cold audience they're saying e-blast it's called co audience they're not believers Cold audience means non-believers and wow. they're buying the e-course wow. because they know that they, they know they need how to know how to fight they're not even believers, and they're getting saved, and they're getting into spiritual warfare right off the bat. They're getting saved, get into spiritual warfare right off the bat. That's what the e-course and these books that I write. This I don't write books for me. I write books from, for the body of Christ. Come on, the spiritual. See, the devil, one thing about the devil understands. He understands anointing. He understands authority. He's scared. He he he's terrified of the word of God. He's terrified of the word of mm. God. But if you don't have no anointing and you have no authority, the word of God means nothing. Wow. You're just like a, you probably you you could be an atheist like you were. Remember your testimony, yeah. and still talk about the word of God, but it has no power behind it because you have no authority. Wow! So many Christians are walking around, walking around like atheists, carnal Christian. You know what carnal Christian Come means? On. Yeah, we know carnal. Carnal means carnal, and I'm talking to my brother and sister a lot of love. Carnal means we know sin, all that stuff. But carnal means that you don't have no spiritual eyes, and everything you see, you see in the natural, because you're carnal. Mm. Carnal is the natural. So instead of seeing the fight in the spirit realm. You see it in the natural, and that's why you lose because the devil, the devil operates in the spirit. He, then it happens in the natural. And the Bible said you worship Jesus Christ in spirit and truth. And if you can't walk into that, then you will have no you have no fight to win. And mm. this is this is one thing I share with you. When I when I got saved, my 30 days of me being saved, brother, they released hell upon me. The witches wow. from Miami, Haiti, Cuba, and New York. I'm talking about it was such hell that came for me that if god didn't step in after the 30 days i would have lost my mind 
Wow. It was torment, torment. They would pull me out of my bed at night. They would choke me, pick me up in the air at night from my, out of my bed. They would pull my feet. I mean, grab my feet, actually hands, grab my feet and try to yank me off the bed. And my room will go cold. My room will go ice cold like the ice box. And they will walk into my room. You can hear the footsteps coming down the hall. They were coming. And then Jezebel would come around my bed and lay, lay on my bed. And my bed would sink in. And she would, she, she would look over me like this and stare at me all night. And you feel that, and your blood goes cold, and your head goes up, and then, and then, and and then, even when I used to, I sleep during the day because I felt if I sleep during the day, I could step at night and try to fight these devils coming wow. for me. And these are, and these are the same demons and principality that I was, I, I was, I was buddy buddy with for twenty five years. Mm. Buddy buddy for twenty five years. They, they they try to they try to uh, there was there was several times. They try to disconnect my my spirit from my body so I can die in the spot. I can feel my spirit trying to come off my body, and I would just try to fight my hands, my spirit, try to keep it in, because if they, they, I felt my spirit coming in my body, I felt that there was disconnecting me from my body and my spirit, man, so I can die and pronounce me dead. And after all that went through, because I, my mind was going so crazy, I didn't know it was daytime or nighttime anymore. I didn't know it was daytime or nighttime anymore. And then on top of that. On top of that, after that happened, it went away after the 30 days. And then along, I kept praying and praying, asking God, why you let them torment me when I gave my life to you? No, God never responded. But God talks on his time. Ask mm. Joe, chapter 38. Ask Joe in chapter 38. God said, put on your pants. I'm going to dress you now. And God told me, God told me, the Lord, the Lord told me, Holy Spirit told me, God, Holy Spirit told me, John, remember the time you told me why I didn't defend you, protected you? And I wasn't there for you when they tormented you. I love that to happen because I wanted to see how much you love me and how wow. much you trust me. Wow. And he said, after the 30 days, he said, he said, no, no devil, no devil, no demon, no warlock, and no witch will be able to touch you again. He said, because you are my weapon. What time is this? No one's going to be able to touch you again. And, and, and God promised me. That's right. When I was, I was in Louisiana, 200 people came out of hands on 200. I was in California. We had 250 people. I lay hands on them. I said, come up to the altar because the COVID-19 is an infirmity spirit. Mm. I got legal right. I, I got rights over that infirmity spirit. I ain't wearing no glove, no mask. The last time I checked, gave Jesus Christ gave me an immune system and it works. Mm. I lay hands on people. I started to pray for people. I mean, breaking fear. The fear has gripped the church. Mm. The fear has gripped the church. Church don't want to talk anymore. Church, people, now we're doing church online because we're afraid. Come on. We're doing church online because the government, because I'm here in New York City, Cuomo, which, 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 which is the devil himself. So the government is acting like Pharaoh and trying to oppress us mm. and take and take our, our, our God-given rights away from us. Listen, I've been to church. I was in California. Pastor said only 25%. I said, let them all in. Let them all in in the mm. name of Jesus. They, if they want, come arrest me. Be, hey, what, what am I going to say? When I get to heaven and the Chinese church, underground church, had church, and they put their lives on the line. See, so are we having, are we going to have Jesus or are we going to have the world? Make up your mind. Come on. Spiritual warfare, I tell you, I tell you this, my brother, we need to, dis we need to disarm the enemy. We need to put the devil on his place. Yes. We need to tell the devil, we're coming for him. That's why I wrote the book, I'm in danger. It's called Offense. It's called offense and spiritual warfare. The book, the mask, Unmasking the Devil, is defense. Christians are staying too long in the defense and getting beat up. And they got, they got spiritual black eyes, broken nose, you know, dismantled, broken, missing teeth spiritually. They're getting all beat up. because they, And then when you ask them, why are you so beat up and you're not fighting back? Well, I'm waiting on God. No, God is waiting on you. Come on. I want to do this. God is waiting on you. First, first of all, I want to say... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've gone an hour and 40 minutes and I'm beyond thankful oh. for you pouring out and <laughs> just pouring out and and everyone has stayed on. We still have 1,500 right now that are live watching, <laughs> but I wanna have you pray before I let you go. Yeah. Like I said, guys, there's links. The first one is to give tonight. The second one is to become a monthly partner. You'll get tons of info when you become that. And then the third one is a spiritual warfare boot camp. 
please guys partner there's 1500 people watching if everybody gives a couple dollars five ten dollars that's more than enough to provide for what god is doing and i just told you guys i'm gonna sow a love offering into john ramirez john ramirez did not ask me for any money he didn't ask me for anything i literally texted Thank him you. and he said yes i want to get on let's do it he didn't ask for nothing so he didn't ask for no money i'm going to sow into him and here's why because we need this in the body of christ I'm going to be sending this video after I upload it on YouTube tonight to every one of my pastor friends. Believe me, I'm going to be sending this video because our eyes need to be open in the supernatural realm. We are sleeping. We have eyes that are closed, ears that are shut. And I know a lot of you are in here Man. tonight and you're sharing because you know this word needs to get out there. So I want to do whatever I can do to help get the word out. I told him before the stream, I said, look, God has given us all glory to God, this massive platform online. Amen. You know, I believe, I have no doubt this video is going to get 200,000 views this week. I, I have zero doubt about that because God is getting the word out supernaturally. And so I told him, I want my followers to start following his ministry, to sow and to be a part of what God is doing. So we're going to link up. This is just the beginning, guys. We're going to partner up. But before I let you go, John, and we're still going to do a book giveaway, guys, don't worry. But before I let you off, I would love for you to pray a prayer of deliverance. I know there's a whole bunch of people in the chat asking for prayer. If you would just say a corporate prayer of deliverance, um, over the people before I let you go, that'd be amazing. Amen. Amen. This is what we're gonna do. This is this, let me let the this is what we have to do. We're dealing with legal rights today. Mm. We're dealing with demonic, we deal we're dealing with demonic legal rights. So the legal rights need to be broken so the blessing can come. come the blessing means the purpose your destiny, your purpose could flow. So you you don't have to be like the Christians, like in the book of numbers, you're growing old, but you're not growing up in the Lord. Wow. Amen. So tonight we need to understand one thing. That whatever you're struggling, whatever has you bond, whatever has you bonded, which is generational, which is personal, which is something that accidentally you open doors in your life. Now, now you regret it. It's like the, it's like the young lion in the book of uh, in the, uh, Psalm 91. The small sin, the, the small sin. I think we think we can control, but in the end, it leads to death. Mm. Amen. So we need to understand. We need to renounce right now. We